How is everybody doing today? Good? Okay, so um, I think you know a little bit about me because something is written on this slide. So I thought it was a good way to start asking you some questions. And um, you guys can raise your hand multiple times. Um, I just want to know a little bit about who you are. So if you could describe yourself as a networking professional, can you please raise your hand? Okay. If you would describe yourself as an IT professional, would you please raise your hand? Okay. And if you would call yourself a software developer, would you raise your hand? Okay. Now, if you never raise your hand, are you willing to share with me how you would describe yourself? You raise your hand? You did, right? So, you did. Okay. Anybody wants to share anything else? Okay. So, let me, let me tell you a little bit more about myself, right? So we get to know each other a little more. Um, I'll start with this. Last night, I was at the fantastic CCIE party. I don't know if any of you has been to that party. Any of you has been there last night? No? Was at the California Academy of Science. Was like living in this movie night at the, at the museum, right? It was really cool. And I was working there for my organization. And I was greeting my CCIEs coming in. And one of these gentlemen asked me for the restroom. And I said, it's on your right. And he looked at me and he said, wow, where is your accent from? And I said, OK, if somebody can figure out that I have an accent just saying is on your right, that's scary. So if you guys don't understand me because of my accent, just wave your hand, OK? And if you want to know, I'm originally from Italy. That's where my accent is from. Okay. So, going a little deeper, I am a product manager within an organization, a BU, within Cisco, that is learning at Cisco. Any of you ever heard of learning at Cisco? Okay. All right. So, that's a BU that you probably want to know as we walk this journey to this transition, right? Because our major charter within Cisco is to build training and certification to enable you throughout this journey, okay? So what do you guys think is the theme of Cisco Live this year? Anybody? What is the theme? What do you think? Yes. Internet of everything, I think you're right. We, we really try hard to say that's the theme this year. So you, got, you guys got it. That's great. So Internet of everything, right? I was um, at a technology keynote just before walking to uh, this side of the road. And that was from Mala Nand, that is a lady, charming lady from services within Cisco. And she was trying to describe what Internet of Thing is and what is this journey to get from where we are today through this pretty fast, we are talking about a couple of years, two to three, five, four, five years, we are not talking about decades anymore, right? To get where we need to go, right? So she said, um, well, that is definitely, she had a panel of speakers from NetApp, Intel, and um, EMC. And basically, Internet of Things is um, periphery devices, right? Connect, col collecting information through sensors, lots of them. We are talking about billions of them, right? Then some of them are mobile, right? Talk about your car, your phones, your cellular phones, right? And then all this data gets into somewhere, right, where it is processed, right? And it goes through a network. So the network is definitely there. And then there is, of course, a data center somewhere, 
where these data are stored, is stored and where it is processed, right? All of these has a common theme behind it, and that common theme is data, 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 right? Big data. Now, a, a gentleman in her panel described data as the currency of Internet of Everything. And that's an excellent way of describing it, right? Is what moves this, this, this innovation for Internet of Things, right? Um, so as you, as you look at the data and the fact that you need to process them in order to get some value out of it, these trillions of dollars of value that everybody's talking about, well, what you have is what is written in this slide, right? You have uh, lots of devices connected to the, to the network, lots of them. We are talking about trillions of them, right? Billions of them. And then, uh, of course, we have speed. We have a lot of speed. Uh, we have mobility. We have security, right? All those components imply that somebody has to operate in these different areas in order to make this work. Right? And this is the transition that I want to discuss today with you in order to understand how this, the, the impact, the, 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 the arrival of this concept of Internet of Things is affecting all of us in the way we work and how, what do we need to learn and how we can learn in order to get where we need to be and in order to be part of those trillions of dollars that are out there for all of us. So, with speed, there is also another consideration that is really critical. We also need to learn in a different way. So if you look at, uh, if you were familiar with our organization in the last, you know, we, 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 we just turned, you know, 20, 25 years, um, we have been doing things pretty much always in the same way. You were learning in class with an instructor, right? You were sitting there for a certain number of days, and then, you know, you were getting to your testing, exams, whatever you wanted to achieve in your life. And that was the way of learning. There is no more time for this. You guys don't have time for this, and there is no time to develop training that needs to stay stable for so long. So we all need to learn that we will need to learn in a different way. We will need to produce training in a different way and everybody needs to be ready to absorb it in a different way. Uh, not get little pieces of information that get consumed everywhere at any time in many different formats. Much more, more richness in terms of interactivity, uh, video availability. For, for our way of learning, right? So there is a lot of transformation that has to happen. Another component of this is the way the workflow will operate, right? So we were also used to have a pretty stable situation in which, um, you know, companies like Cisco were producing products, right? And then channel partners will were pretty much selling, maybe sometimes integrating uh, products. Uh, now things have been changing pretty dramatically, right? So we are not talking anymore about boxes, connecting boxes, integrating them maybe. Now we are discussing about end-to-end -end solutions, multi-vendor solutions. You can't come to one vendor and get all you need for your solution in terms of training. We need to partner with our technology partners to offer you training that, that enables you to look at this as a solution, no more of like a set of building blocks. There is a lot of um, interaction with environment that were never there before. If you look into everything that is, is, has been said about the Internet of Things, we are now dealing with verticals that have been never really deeply involved with us, right? Um, we are talking about automotive, uh, healthcare, we are talking about trans, you know, transportation, um, municipalities, a lot of different things. So there are a lot of other aspects of the knowledge that was ne never there before. Before was technologists, right? We were all technologists. We were building networks, connecting boxes. Also, the fact that, um, that the value moves from the box to the solution and up the ladder to the, to the applications 
that implies also that the software piece into the networking environment is gaining a lot of uh, attention, right? So we are all much more focused on um, applications, right? You, of course, are very well familiar now with our new brand ACI, right? ACI, the A stands for application. Everything is focused on applications. DevNet, right? I mean, look at that around you, all this software, I mean, attention around software, right? So we will need to, at some point in this discussion, zoom into looking into how all of this really has an impact on bridging all these different perspectives. People coming from the networking world, from the computing world, from the software development world, how they can all talk and be able to communicate and build something that is meaningful to the end customer, right? With all that also, we, we see the proliferation of job roles that were never there before, right? And here there are some fancy names that we actually have uh, picked up from, uh, from reports, right? So if you just look into this chart, all of this is very relevant to what we're talking about today. And none of that is what we had in our past certification portfolios, right? We were all about the network and how the network would support maybe voice, um, maybe collaboration, but it all, was all about the network. Now, that is not anymore the real story, right? So we need to really look outside our comfort zone. And if you start from the development side or if you start from the networking side, we need to come together and we need to fill that gap in between. So one other important aspect of Internet of Things, of course, as we were discussing already before, is the factor of scale, right? So if you look at how many people we have today that we reach with our training and certification, and if you look into how that would scale, if, we are, if you are doing a pure mathematical proportion, when all these other billions of devices are connected and the network grows so quickly, it's impossible. We cannot possibly train all these people in such a short period of time. So as we will see in the next you know, few minutes, what is getting into this, into this situation in order to help resolving is what we also have been discussed throughout all our keynotes in the last few days, right? And that is, really simplification and automation. So when you put together the infrastructure that is virtualized, that is open, and also is um, anywhere, right, with, with the cloud um, uh, model that comes into the picture, then you start really enabling all this automation and all these, um, these orchestrations, tools that allow you to scale. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to, to reach the numbers that we need to reach in such a short period of time. So there are, what is really interesting to, to watch is where the value of the individuals have been migrating, right? So in the past, until pretty much now, um, what we had is a model that has been used for decades, I would say. We plan on a, on a deployment, we design it, right? Our architect design it, then we implement, and then we, we support it, we troubleshoot it, day two, right? Operations. Um, that is not working anymore now, okay? We need to look at things in a different way. As the automation and the cloud provision, self-provisioning models, you heard probably, zero touch provisioning, right? Terms like this kicks in, we can alleviate from the workforce that operates into the infrastructure management and design and deployment from the day-to-day -day task, right? Because that can be automated. However, that also implies that we need to bring in people that are actually able to enable that automation. And you will see, as I zoom in slowly where I want to go, that uh, there is actually a shift in the, into the job roles for the networking industry, making space for these development jobs that were not there before, right? 
However, the individuals that stay more on the networking side of the equation, they have to add a different kind of value, right? So, if you look at the responsibility focus for individuals that are operating in the future, in the near future though, in the networking industry, you will see uh, the bar represent uh, is not, of course, accurate in terms of numbers, but uh, reports the trends that we see, right? So definitely there is more design that is going to happen, right? So the blue bars are actually the, 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 the new models that are coming into the picture with the cloud and with, with, with automation and with programmability. Why there is more design? There is more design because, let's be honest, right? Yes, we do simplify the simple tasks, but as some of our keynotes, ag again, we're, we're discussing, there is a lot more intelligence that you need to put into what you're doing. The solutions are at the same time meant to simplify the daily tasks, the repetitive, you know, uh, time-consuming tasks, but also require a lot of intelligence from the people that design those infrastructure because they are complex, right? So you need to learn more. In the deployment phase is where you really see a gain, right? Now, a gain doesn't mean that there will, there will not be no jobs in the deployment and troubleshooting, right? But if you look at proportionally how the network will grow and how the infrastructure will grow because of Internet of Things, you will see that actually we can use less growth, let me say. Not, a, 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 not less people, but certainly the growth won't be proportional because we can automate. Same thing in the operation, right? There is space for improvement there. We can do a better, efficient, a more efficient um, job in automate some of those tasks. And you, you learn a lot about that, right? I mean, there has been a lot of demos showing, okay, I can zoom in Meraki and this and that and source file integration so I can actually see how the network behaves and automatically I can react to that, right? So a lot of that was done manually before, right? However, there is much more space now for optimization, right? And of course, for innovation. Because now, the network is open. So really unleash infinite possibilities for improvement, right? So that is where you all can really invest your mind and help really go into the next level, right? So this chart is really showing you what are the trends into the job roles because of the fact that we introduce um, innovation into the technologies that you're all familiar with, right? Uh, to eliminate or to reduce the efforts into the tasks that can be automated and simplified, right? You heard a lot about ACI can reduce the task from something that uh, would take weeks to 10 minutes. Then you say, oh my gosh, I'm out of job, right? I mean, that was my job assurance. No, that's not true but you need to be willing to move into the direction in which you can really add more value into this equation, okay? So these next two charts are a little bit of a summary, you know, kind of bullet points, so I'm not going to read through them, but what it really tells you is, again, you know, the fact that you, you know, configuration of the network can be simplified, but hey, when you design it, there is a lot that you can add there in terms of value, right? And this is valid for the individuals, so when they think about their next career move, but it's also valid even more for the hiring managers, right? That is what the hiring managers are looking at. Are you able to help me leverage those technologies that are today available to automate so that I can simplify the management of my network and I can reinvest those resources into optimization into innovation into something new where I can really get value out of okay now that is exactly what we are doing right so learning Cisco is a view within Cisco that has been created because of this we are there since decades why because this is not the first time that is happening right so think about the first time when we had voice and data that came together so people that were used to, you know, the old way of um, deploying uh, voice systems, now they find this, 
you know, IP phone that is what it is, right? Is that a computer? Is that a phone? I mean, it has no plug. What do I do? I mean, you know, it's different, right? So you had to move into that direction and kind of think in an integrated way. When I put together my uh, data center certification and training program that we released a couple of years ago, I had a lot of discussion because I had in a room people coming from the computing side, right, of the data center and people coming from the networking side. And of course they were all saying, oh, no, 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 you know, I am, I'm a server guy. I don't know IP stuff, I don't know TCP, what's that, right? And, and, and then there was the, the networking person, right? We were discussing about the, the, the Nexus 1K, right? That's a virtual switch. And it's like, okay, so now where the plugs are for this, right? And the, there are no plugs, right? So, you know, think about the fact that we started breaking down those silos, right? Virtualization was the first step, again, after, before other voice and video integration and, and voice and data and all of that where recently we had a big breakdown of those silos, right? People really had to walk across. And even if you are a server guy, now you're not going to be only a networking guy, but those two teams had to integrate. And a lot of the most advanced customers of ours actually started rethinking their IT organization. And some of you may have experienced that in that perspective. So now I don't have a server team and a networking team. Security is another example. Security is being layered on top of the network at the beginning. Now it's pervasive, it's integrated. If you are a security person, I mean, you're not isolated, right? You are deeply embedded into all the rest. So those are all situations in which we have been there already to guide and to enable the workforce to you know, move along these journeys, right? So it's not the first time we are doing this. And as we started looking ahead into this technology evolution, because from our perspective, we are inside Cisco, so we know what is coming, right? So as we know what is coming, we can also figure out with the help of the most advanced customers that we always bring in, so we don't make up the certification programs that we build, trying to understand how this is affecting you, right? And as we were doing this, we started looking into the fact that the decision making has been moving from the IT departments into some of the line of business departments. And some of you may have experienced that as well. So the business component of it and the technology component of it are now also merged, right? So if you are a top level architect, you have a lot of business discussion to do to convince your C something O, CXO of some sort, that the budget is needed for this and that, and this is where you bring value to the, your organization, right? So that's one trend that we see definitely coming. And then of course, as we discussed throughout this, this last few minutes, the integration of the applications and the software components is big, right? So as we were looking into this, way ahead, way before those job roles actually were out there, we started working very closely with our top customers again, that were going through our field trial, our beta test, and we were discussing how they were seeing this job role evolving. And we have put together a pretty comprehensive program that I will go through in the next slide or two. Um, so, you know, I, I won't stay too long on to uh, this one because it's a little generic. But we really look into how the roles have been evolving. And what we have been looking is a chart a little bit like this, which is, you know, with a, a little bit of an odd graphic. But what it tells you is that, well, you know, we do have an infrastructure on the bottom, right? We always had. And we have been also leveraging automation before. It's not the first time. But we were doing through CLI, right, and scripting. Now we do through a, a programmatic approach, right? And of course, you learn some about you know, policy and how we interact through controllers, AP controllers, you know, to enable those policies. What we also see is that the fundamental roles of, of designer, that is our architect, your architects, right? the engineer that is doing deployment, 
and the business application engineer are still there. The difference though is that those individuals need to have a common way to communicate because the business application is now not separated completely from the rest of the IT infrastructure, right? Need to be more integrated. And um, the design and the, and the engineering, of course, need to know new technologies that enable them to leverage those APIs. To do what? Maybe to write the code themselves. But what we see as a trend is that there is actually a new role, which is the role, and pardon the red dot that is not very visible, but the role of the developer that is uh, to on the top uh, right side, which is a software developer that is deeply embedded with the IT department and understand the same, dis the same jargon, right? Because if you're a software developer, some of you probably are, you know that you think in terms of software development, right? So for you, a piece of memory, let me be simple, right, is a, is a chunk of memory. You need it, you grab it. Now, that might be a routing table. That might be an ACL table. You don't want to do that. You need to understand the basic theory that is behind the networking and the IT world so that you can do your job effectively, right? So there is the need, again, to bridge that gap. And the way we have been doing is basically, I'm sorry, migrating people from one side of the world to the other one and some of those roles are similar to what they are before, but they need to know more, right? They need to know how to leverage those API and what they offer, right? However, there is this new role that is the role of the developer that needs to learn the foundational, non hands on, but the foundational of networking so that they can be effectively integrated, right? So, what we have done, we have been doing a, a pretty deep analysis, is, you know, lasted. I would say almost a year at this point. And we have been identifying what those individuals need to know today in order to be effective. And we have built blueprints of those roles and we built training behind that that is, starts to be available now. So keep in mind, we can put out training before the products are out. So today, if you go on our, on our sites, you will see training that is all video-based to respect the other move that I discussed before uh, on everything that is available today for uh, mostly the, the one environment, right? So 1PK, S10C gives you all the terminology, foundational concepts, and allows you really to start building your skills in order to receive when in July more products will roll out to go into more of the uh, APIC devices, right? And really understand what you can do with them as a developer or as an architect or as an engineer that deploys and integrates everything together. Troubleshooting tools, very different from what they were in the traditional networking environment. So um, you will see that this is really a bridging program. Why I'm saying this? So this is evolving super fast. Right? So we will continuously update this training so that you're always available for you for the latest things that you, you need to know. However, if you fast forward a couple of years from now, if you are a data center person, you probably need to know all of this plus much more that will come out in the next two years. If you are a routing and switching person, you'll need to know all the agents that are in your platforms. If you are a... a security person, you better know how you can programmatically deploy your security infrastructure, right? And so forth. So slowly, you will see that those concepts that today have been built as a separate program to bridge those skills for only the people that need it will eventually roll into all the other programs that you are already familiar with that we, you know, traditionally we have, right? So the CCMP, the CCNA, CCIE, the CCIE. So when are we going to do that? We are going to do that when there will be enough market penetration for which actually people are using this day in, day out in their daily job. Right? Because if we do it today, we force a, a, a huge amount of people to study things that not ne they don't necessarily need. So today we have decided for an add-on kind of program that enable only the people that need those skills to gain them and is built on top of our existing certification. But in the future, as we continuously refresh, 
you will see that those skills slowly will get into all our our certifications and training because they, at that point they will be needed. Okay. So this is the strategy that we adopted in order to really build and enable this workforce of the future. Uh, of course, there is much more than that that is not yet uh, publicly, you know, announced and, and, and available, right? But you can imagine from what I said that we are definitely looking into the cloud. We are definitely looking into um, into big data, right? Analytics and all those different skills that are needed in order to enable that transition that I described at the beginning, right? So stay tuned. Our website is www.ciscolearningnetwork.com. That is the part. Of course, all the information is also on cisco.com. But specifically, if you want information on the training and certification, um, CLN, that is Cisco Learning Network, is, is the place you, you want to go. It's all organized in social groups. You can get together with people virtually that are preparing for the same training or certification that you are. You can exchange uh, information. is is built in a, in a format of a social site, so it, there is a lot of great information. And you know, I encourage you definitely to check it out. And you know, stay tuned with us. And you know, I'm available for any questions, or you can reach out to me offline as well. Okay. Do you guys have any questions specifically immediately, or make sense what I was trying to say? Yes. So as I was saying before, um, I would say that when we analyze this, if you are at an, a designer level, which is pretty much what we don't call an architect, but are your architects, right? We don't call them architect because we have an architect certification that is very different. So we don't want to confuse people. We don't call them architects. The designers, though, are your architects. So they should be at the CCIE level. For this specific program, we consider CCMP enough to get into it, and we didn't want to have a bar so high that very few people could get into it. So we said we analyzed the skills that are needed, and we thought that CCMP was sufficient at this point. In future, as I was saying, yes, you can expect that those skills will permeate all our track, including CCIE. Now, keep in mind that all of our certifications are built on skill set and not on products. So you will not see, let me say loud and clear, a ACI CCIE, okay? Or a, I don't know, a con con contact center CCIE, whatever, you know? Or a Nexus 7K CCIE, okay? Because we build the, the, the certifications on skill set. So you can see potentially a network programmability CCIE, and I'm not saying that that would be the case, but you know, when we see that there is an area in terms of skill set that needs an expert level, uh, uh, need to be addressed at the expert level, then we build it. But we bring in people from the industry. We don't just sit down at the table and make this up. We, we invite people to come in uh, from our customers, from our partners, and you guys are more than welcome to, again, reach out to me. If you are experiencing any of what I described today, we want to hear from you because it's extremely important that we understand that what we're doing is what you need and we can adjust if we don't, right? So does that address your question? Yeah. So no CCIE network programmability quite yet. There are not enough people in the industry that are doing this yet. But, um, you know, if you fast forward and keep in mind, you know, in the past, we came up with a CCIE data center 10 years after Cisco was into that field, right? I don't expect that it will last 10 years, right? So, I mean, the pace of evolution is so fast that things are evolving more quickly than before, so. Okay? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes, so there is a, a link to a page that I kind of missed to include in the, on the deck, but I'm more than happy to share with you all. Um, that is on uh, the Cisco Learning Network site. Uh, the best way to reach there today is unfortunately to do a search. You do a search for network programmability certification, you will find that page. The reason why it's not an official page yet 
is because you will be able to get those specialist certification only when all the exams are available. That will happen in summer. Right now, only the first exam is getting available. So you are not able to get the full certification yet, so we don't have the title out there yet, you know, because it's coming. But we wanted to make the training available. So the training is available. There are two components, I think, available as today, and there are three more that are coming literally in the next like few days. They're ready to go out, and the exams that go with them. And then we will add uh, pretty much the information on the APIC EM and on the APIC DC in July time frame when the products will be more general availability. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh-huh. So it does not include specifically any, uh, it includes use cases, right, that are across the board on all the different technologies. But keep in mind that this is really on the programmability aspect of the skill set. So it will teach you how to leverage APIs, how to write a code on top of these APIs in the different environments. So 1PK rather than XNC, rather than uh, APIX and so forth, apply to use cases that range across different situations. Uh, security could be collaboration, could be you know different different areas. But uh, it's not very focused on the each vertical because it would be just impossible to address anything separately. So if you are anywhere in the industry and you think you're using programmability, this is the program for you, no matter where you are coming from. And yes, you may see a security use case developed instead of maybe exactly what you want, but the skill set that you exercise will be useful to you no matter where you are, because the, the skill set are across the board, leveraged across the board, no matter what is the, your, your use case. Make sense? You know, this again is an early stage program, right? I mean, um, if we go too granular, we would be an overkill, right? It would be so complicated that people would just be lost. Okay, what do I need to, to take? You know, which one is mine, you know? So you need to be a little more generic at, at this stage, and then as these get more mature, of course, as I was saying, it will be plugged into all the different technology tracks. There is training and there is certification as well. I mean, exams, yes. The training is online for this, it's a video based. Um, for each of those modules is about one day worth of training and you can self-paced so you can just go through it at your own pace. As we move along and the products will be more available and all of that, we will be also adding self-paced labs, we will be adding more components so that you guys can really practice and so on. And then of course on the products themselves, so for example on the 9K, for those of you that are leveraging data center specific uh, products, there is also an extensive training that is um, more of a traditional product training. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay, well, thank you all for staying. I appreciate it. And, and again, I'm really looking for inputs as well. So if you happen that you decide to go through this training, and you see anything that is not what you expect, I really want to hear from you. We don't take it personally. We are here really to make the right program to enable you. So it has to be what you, what you need, right? So let me know. My name is all over CLN, so you guys can find me easily. Okay? Thank you very much. Take care.